Um, I'm also delighted to welcome our guest, Michael Ware. Um, Michael and I go back quite a way now, but Michael is probably one of the people who has raised more money for plants uh, in the UK and elsewhere in the biogas sector than anybody else I know. And what Michael doesn't know about what needs to be done to raise money probably isn't worth knowing, if I may say. So uh, I can't imagine a better person to talk us through if you have a good project, you're thinking of a project, uh, what are the things that would, are the essentials? What are the hygiene factors? What are the nice to haves? Uh, Michael, over to you. Thank you. Uh, I that. Oh, that one. Hello, um, I'm Michael Ware. Does that work? I think it does. And I work for a company called Green Draft, hence the drafts. And as I mentioned on LinkedIn, if you ask a question, I'll give you a draft to take home. Uh, they're not bugged up or anything. So don't, we won't listen to your conversations. They're not made by TikTok. So I've got 15 to 20 minutes to talk. Um, I'm really gonna talk about my experience of raising debt and equity for biogas projects over the last 10 years. As Chris says, I've raised about a billion probably now and I'm working on about 400 million pounds worth of projects at the moment. So I spend a lot of my day talking to banks, talking to infrastructure funds, trying to shape these projects into a space that they can be funded. And um, what I'm gonna talk about today is how to do that and, and more importantly, what not to do. Uh, I'll say I'll talk for 15 and then I'll take questions at the end. So I'll talk about who we are, headlines around the need for biogas, but you all know that already, so I'll skip over that a little bit talk about risk in biogas compared to wind or solar and it's very important infrastructure money is completely blind it's just looking for returns so the same people who want to fund your project also can fund wind or solar so we have to make the case why biogas is better appetite and achievable terms uh, and then really the do's and don'ts of bankability and I'll try and do all of that in 15 minutes okay so who are we 135 people worldwide, been going for about 12 years. All we do is raise debt and equity for projects. Um, we are French and Dutch based originally, but now in 10 different countries. And we lead the world in floating offshore wind. We've done more transactions than anybody else. And we're starting to lead the world in biogas. Biogas the need, lots of facts and figures. I won't read all them out, but Europe consumes about 400 billion cubic meters of gas per year. Virtually all of that is imported. 45% used to come from the Russians and burning gas contributes to 25% of European greenhouse gas emissions. A large biogas plant, a really big one, will do 40 million cubes a year. So 400 billion is an awful lot of biogas plants. Europe is now looking to having I suppose the narrative is having sort of successfully decarbonized generation of electricity, or at least we understand how to do it, and we're well on the path, and it's just a question of time. Gas is very much the poor, heating is very much the poor relation. It's, it's the elephant in the room of renewables. We still heat our houses the way the Victorians did. You know, we, we burn fossil fuels to heat our houses whilst we run out electricity off wind and solar. So Europe is very conscious of the need to decarbonize gas and was already trying to do that before the Russian invaded Ukraine. And now it's become a question of energy security as well as emissions. So we see the move to decarbonize gas as being the huge growth area in the next 10 to 20 years in renewables. And the market is 50 billion pound plus in terms of required investment. Uh, I'll skip over that one. Biogas is riskier. The answer to the question is yes. Is it risky the wind or solar? And it's risky because you've got two new variables. You have feedstock. So wind and solar, you're relying on God to make it windy or sunny. Biogas, you're relying on a local farmer. He's less amenable than God to, to your plant. So you have to think about where does your feedstock come from and how many cubes of gas you can get from different types of feedstock. And there is a trade-off here between low value 
but low gas yielding feedstocks like manure, where the cow and she's taken a lot of the energy out already, to high value, high yielding feedstocks which are expensive to obtain. So the best feedstock in the world is probably cheese. Cheese yields about 600 cubic meters per ton. Cow manure, wet pig manure, you're down to 100 or so, 150 maybe. Food waste, very variable depending how much cheese there is in the food waste. But your choice, your first choice is do I go for low gas yielding, easier to obtain feedstocks or do I go for harder to obtain but much higher gas yielding. So we see a spectrum of animal plants, food waste plants uh, and then crop de dedicated plants. So that's the first problem is the availability of the feedstock. And just some interesting slides there, 1.3 billion tonnes of manure exist in Europe. Holland alone exports 3 million tonnes a year of pig shit, mainly to Germany, Poland and Belgium. Every day, about 2,000 articulated lorries leave Holland full of pig shit and drive to Poland. So whenever you think you've got a bad job, somebody somewhere has a worse one. Um, other feedstocks, we're looking at straw, algae and cacti. Moving on, technology is well proven at commercial scale and the industry seems to be settling on a standard design. Plants are getting bigger, not smaller. Some people are still trying to make small modular plants work. And I have a client who has a product with IKEA. He's trying to make that work in their restaurants. Smaller plants are harder. Bigger plants, the bigger plants get, the easier they are to run and the more bankable they are. And then always the perennial question, do we need an EPC? Hang on, I'll just my watch. Um, banks are coming to the point of view that you can live without an EPC because there's no single bit of your kit is probably worth more than a million pounds anyway. So it's bolting lots of little bits of kit together. But if you've got an EPC, that makes your life much easier. Um, other risks to consider, public opposition to farming practices. Very hard to get planning permission for a plant in Holland. We had a very large plant that the protesters chased us all the way through to the high court in order to get the plant overturned. Um, secondly, plants are fundamentally big chemistry sets. You know, they're not plug and play products like wind and solar. The bigger plants employ full-time chemists now to optimize the gas yield. So this is not an easy thing to do on a very small scale as a hobby. You know, this is big boy stuff in terms of full-time chemists, etc. And simply performance risk. If the plants stop working, there's a classic domino effect. You lose the gate fee, you lose the gas, you lose the certificates, you lose the fertilizer sales, you lose the CO2 sales, and you're left with a big tank full of mud that you have to do something with. So plant failure is much more catastrophic here than it is for a wind or a solar plant, that if it goes wrong, you can fix it within a week. If your plant stops working, you could be three to six months to get it back up to gas yield again. Feedstock price tends to be an issue. And then finally, power price. Two types of income here, the physical sale of the gas from the TTF, and then the sale of the certificates or the subsidies. TTF price bounces around all over the place. I think it's about 50 or 60 at the moment. It was 250 last summer. It has gone down to a low as 20. The certificate price is more stable and a number of the oil off-takers will give you a floor price on your certificates, which from a bankability point of view is absolute manna from heaven. If you can go to the bank and say, I've got a floor price on my green certificates, your bankability gets an awful lot better overnight. So, at appetite and achievable terms. Firstly, there's some more facts about market size. So, say the biggest part of the world, Weister in Holland, running on pig shit, produces around, no, chicken shit, sorry. I <laughs> the type of shit there is very important to distinguish. Um, runs, produces about 40 million cubes per annum. That is a very, very big plant. Uh, if we're going to get 10% of European gas from biogas, we need a thousand of those. Uh, and they are ticket price between 50 and 80 million each. So you can see the size of the scale of the investment. Uh, and this is why all of the infrastructure funds and the banks, I think, and actually European biogas is going to need billions in the next 10 years. Uh, 
project IRRs are higher. A good biogas plant should make 12% project IRR. Wind and solar is now trending down to as low as four or five. So you get twice the return. It's a well understood technology. The investment narrative is well understood and all of the plants will be in Europe or Northern America. Hence from an infrastructure fund, it's a very attractive proposition. And plants can be leveraged 80 to 90% through a combination of senior and junior debt, and I'll talk more about that. Typical terms don't hold me to this. It very much but This is a very perfect plant with everything agreed. You know, with a fully contracted feedstock, an offtake for the, for, for, the, for the gas, a floor price on the, on the certificates, planning, everything done. This is achievable. If you don't have a perfect plant, you're not going to get these terms. But you can see debt, 65 to 70, probably coming up, and tenors on debt are going out. Somebody offered me a 20-year debt term the other day, unheard of five years ago. Uh, but the pension funds are now saying, actually, if we're in for 10, we might as well be in for 20. Obviously, that reduces your principal repayments massively. Um, key issues always, and I'm just going to keep saying this word, feedstock, feedstock, feedstock. Have you got the feedstock within 50 miles of the plant? How certain can you be about the feedstock will turn up? And are there alternative sources if it doesn't? Have you got someone to take away the digestate or the fertilizer? And have you got an offtake for the gas? And the mezzanine debt, infrastructure fund type money, more expensive than senior, hence it takes more risk. Um, eight to nine percent returns, lower cover ratios, may require equity participation. Sorry, I'm rattling through this because they were very tough with me about sticking to time. Making your project bankable. So, a perfect project, uh, and I think I was just talking to some people outside, they seem to have a perfect project. A perfect project will have a site with planning and environmental permits. Do not underestimate that. Look at the one in Holland, had everything else on this slide and lost in the High Court on planning. And I spent all day Friday watching my client lose a planning appeal 8 0. So when they came to vote, everyone said, all in favour, no one put their hand up, all against, everyone put their hand up. So you, you can lose planning. Proven technology, you know, you don't need to reinvent the well here. There's an awful lot of people out there with pumps and tanks and, and shredders. They're all proven technology. You don't need to be backing a guy who's come out of the university who's had a great idea. Long-term feedstock contract, offtake contracts, you can all read. Uh, and then certainty over revenue. Now, the banks are going to accept that, that, that you cannot give them certainty on the TTF, but they will want certainty over everything else. So they'll live with a bouncing TTF price if you've got a floor price on the subsidies and ideally a fixed price for the, off, for the compost. Things not to do, sites that haven't got planning, novel technology, they're all the opposites really. But you know, that guy at the university who's had a great idea, he's not going to be bankable for at least a few years. Um, unproven or hard to treat feedstocks. So somebody approached me yesterday, last week with a cacti project. Very interesting, but still a long way away. And algae, again, people have looked at algae for years. It probably has a fantastic gas yield if you can make it work. But I think people are thinking, actually, look, you can make this thing work on chicken shit and there's an awful lot of chicken shit in the world. Why bother trying to do algae and cacti? It's just too hard. Um, small scale projects, nobody will fund a six to seven million pound project very hard because it's the same amount of work for a 50 million pound project and they make a much bigger return. Micro bag biogas, you know, these little size of dustbin type things, I, I, I can't see it. Non-OCD countries, it's hard to generalize, but Eastern Europe is hard. Sub-Saharan Africa is hard. You know, I have done a plant in South Africa, but it's just getting harder the further you go from OECD. I just, just, it's just life. Um, merchant feedstock risk. Somebody did do one of these uh, and nobody did come. They tried to build a food waste plant, built it entirely and then spent their lives and no one turned up with any food waste and, and they went into administration. So people are wary if you have no contracted feedstock. Uh, aggressive TTF assumptions. You know, there's no point in going out and saying the gas price is 150 because it used to be that last summer. And trust me, it will come back. Unless we get an incredibly cold winter 
is not going back to those levels. Uh, and then finally, no off-take arrangements. You've got to have a route into the grid and then a route to market, a route to transport, as they call it, to get rid of the TTF, uh, the RTFCs. So, in conclusion, this is a huge market. 400 billion tonnes of gas, all of which is imported, uh, and it's 25% of European emissions. This is a huge investment market of at least 25 to 50 billion over the next five to 10 years. Uh, and huge impetus has been given to this market by the Ukraine. Suddenly we've realized we are massively dependent on Russia for gas. And meanwhile, we've got a huge amount of feedstock within Europe. Uh, if food waste in Europe was, was a, a country, it would be the third highest emitter of greenhouse gas in the world. So we have a huge amount of food waste 1.3 billion tons of pig shit and, and chicken shit and we're still buying gas from the Russians. Uh, and I think everybody thinks that can't make any sense. Proven technology, well understood investment narrative, people will back plants. There are 7,000 plants in Germany, 10,000 plants in Europe. This is a proven methodology. Plants are just getting bigger and they can be leveraged. You can get debt into these things. Uh, I did a 150 million debt deal last year I'm doing a 200 million pound debt deal at the moment. You can get debt, it, it, it's hard. And if you, but if you've got one of those perfect projects that looks like the do's, you will get debt and junior debt to back you. And I'm gonna stop there and thank you for your time. And I'll take any questions. <laughs> uh, as trailed on LinkedIn, if you ask a question, I'll give you a toy draft. And I really don't wanna take them home because I got a lot of funny looks on the train coming up. Great. Well, Thank, thank you very much, Michael, for a very good um, helicopter view of how to finance your plant. I would like to kick off on a couple of things, if I may, and give the audience time to think of up, up, up some, some questions. Um, on scale, I can understand and I completely sympathize with your view that we're getting bigger, sector is getting bigger, projects are getting bigger. You don't want to spend your time as a Savile Row merchant fitting a bespoke suit to a very small plant, which isn't going to make it. But if we're going to decarbonize the agricultural sector, we're probably going to have to have a load of little, small, maybe modular plants. Do you see a way of helping to finance those? <coughs> it wouldn't necessarily be you. I know you're looking at the bigger, bigger stuff, but uh, do you see that there's a potential way of doing that if we can get a modular technology which could be rolled out. I've talked to one uh, provider recently who's looking at a herd size for dairy as yeah. small as 100. Yeah. I think the average in the UK is about 120. So that would mean that you could get a little anaerobic digester attached to the average dairy. Yeah, uh, and I think there's three quick points there. I mean, firstly, small scale modular does work in renewables provided there's scale so all those small scale units add up to a bigger proposition you know we were doing rooftop solar five years ago at, at each panel because each house was a thousand pounds but people were putting lots of houses together and going and raising 25 50 million to do that so what, don't get me wrong i'm not saying you can't do modular what you can't do is a one off five million pound investment it is hard really hard you know if you have a 50 million pound facility that is 10 little investments and they're all well established, people will be interested. Um, secondly, there are a lot of modular plants already exist. The, the challenge with modular is gas to engine, the economics are not great because the engine just costs so much money. Gas to grid is hard because the gas cleanup unit costs a lot of money. One of the things we're doing at the moment is retrofitting gas cleanup units to gas to engine plants in Germany that no longer get the subsidy but still have the gas but need to split it into CH4 and CO2 to put it into the grid but a gas cleanup unit is going to cost two million pounds so we're putting together collections of farmers all piping into one gas cleanup unit so there are imaginative solutions and the issue of scale isn't the size of the plant per se it's the size of the facility because the banks take the view it's the same lawyers, the same technical advisors on a, on a 100 million pound facility is on a five. 
so I, I just I'll make more money on 100 than I would on a five. So they just don't want to lend you five billion. Yeah. Yeah. Can I ask on, on that, is there much difference? Because, I mean, the long experience of the banking sector, you know, you look at the interest rate, you look at the spread over um, uh, <coughs> what the market, money market rate is, but, you know, there are also bankers applying rules of thumb about what they're prepared to risk and what they're not. Um, and they don't often tell you about that. Is there much difference between the European banks? Is it easier to borrow in euros for a project than in sterling from a British bank? Um, so, I mean, the, the dominant banks in biogas are, are the Dutch. You know, ABN, Rabo, ING. They've probably lent more money to the biogas space than anybody else. And which is interesting because mo most of the plants aren't in Holland, but they've been dominant. Um, AIB, Barclays, NatWest, Aviva in the UK have also led to biogas. Some banks say we won't take uh, Brexit risk, so, so they won't lend to the UK. That was probably two years ago. I haven't heard that for a while now. What banks generally don't like is any form of non-Euro, non-GB FX risk. So, so if you've got a plant in a non-OCD, in a non-Euro country, you're going to struggle to get a hedge for 20 years. So, so, so no one's going to give you a hedge against a different currency for 20 years and hence you're adding currency risk back into the mix if you want an experienced European bank to fund a project in a non-OCD country. And I, I was surprised you were saying that you thought that it wasn't essential uh, or you know, obviously not essential if you've got equity um, to have a fix <coughs> on your gas offtake for any length of time uh, because I'd assumed if you talk to the traders, the Vitols and so forth, you might get a gas offtake in the market going out to about seven years. I know there are some Dutch consultants who will try and arrange a bespoke <coughs> gas offtake with a company that could take you out 10 or 12 years. But I was assuming if you were going to go for bank debt, you would need to have that sort of length of term on the offtake to give them the reassurance to lend. Yeah. You, you've got to have a physical route to market offtake. So you've got to have a, a big oil company who you're to say, we will buy the gas, but you, you won't get a fixed TTF price for 20 years. No one will fix that. Or if they do, they'll fix it at such a low level that it's not worth having. And it's the same with wind and solar. You know, the banks had to get comfortable taking electricity price risk eventually and they are and they are well on the despite the variability of the ttf over the last 18 months yeah yeah they are happy taking yeah. that sort and, of and, and it's a bit of a what's the word people if you've got a beringa or a poiri price curve that says we can predict the ttf price for the next 10 years and it's going to look like this people will say go on then that's enough for my credit committee you know Nobody really believes that Beringa and Pari can predict the GTF price for the next 10 years, but they make a lot of money saying people they can. Hopefully there's nobody here from Beringa or Pari. So people do need those price curves, but you won't get a fully fixed... You know, somebody may correct me and say, I've got one. If you've got a fully fixed TTF price at anything north of the 70, you know, you're a millionaire because that's a very valuable thing to have. Right, I've got a... So question from the audience there. Hello. Uh, Michael, um, fantastic. You give him a draft. Uh, no, that's okay. No, seriously, fantastic I don't want to take meditation. you back on the train. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, I'm Kunal from Energia. Uh, we build uh, biogas plants. I was just here yesterday talking about our uh, love and hate relationship with a lot of financing world people. Um, overall, I think the financing world has a very crucial role to play. Quick question, two. Uh, do you see um, a space for development capital, which is very scars everybody wants to put money when the project is all the lists which you mentioned are tuck 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 ticked then there are people who will stand in a queue to finance yeah but do you see uh, instruments coming out for financing development capital yeah there are a couple um there's a fund in london they won't thank me for telling you there's a fund in london called corkia k-o-r-k-i-a they do do development capital um so they'll come in at a very early stage and some of the big oil companies and traders will come in at an early-ish stage provided they can see your project's going to happen and that they'll get given the offtake. So if you approach them and say, well, I've got a site with planning, 
uh, and um, I've got the feed stock arranged, but I need half a million to a million pound to get it completely over the line. We people will look at that. The oil companies will look at that. Corkia will look at that. We'll even look at that as green draft. Um, but nobody will fund you to say, "I'm going to go and find a site and trust me." That's very hard. You've you really got to ha at least have an option on the land, and you can go from there. Yeah. Thank you very much. We've got another question here. Can you give the guy a draft? <laughs> Hello, I'm Arnav. I'm from TD Security. Well. So the question is that do you think that we are at an inflection point right now, given the things that have happened in 2022 in terms of awareness amongst infrastructure investors and biogas? Yeah, I think absolutely, definitely we are. We, you know, people were, people got rich and fat funding wind and solar uh, and making 10% returns. Uh, then suddenly the pension funds all came in and said, we don't need 10%. We need, if it's index linked, we can live with three or 4% even. Uh, and so the returns, the cost of capital of wind and solar went through the floor. The problem is a lot of the infrastructure funds had promised their investors, I'm going to give you a 10% return every year. And now suddenly they can't find things. Fantastic. The answer is yes. We have one question at the back and three minutes to go. Okay. Hi, Michael. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm Renato from Gel Biogas in Brazil. Amazing presentation, amazing material. Uh, I would like to see your feelings on the smart money on biogas because my feeling is that most of the, the funds lost the pace for investing in biogas, especially in Latin America and Brazil. I see a lot of interest coming from strategic investors like the big oil companies and so. Uh, given the capex intensity of such projects and so on, most of the private equities and venture capitals uh, did not look for that in, in the past few years, but I don't see how that, how is your feeling on that on the future uh, and present in, in Europe and in Latin America? Yeah. Uh, I, I, I was at a meeting two weeks ago now where Brazil, somebody put a big picture of Brazil up on the wall. Uh, and, and what we were doing is they were working back from where are all the chickens in the world and hence where is the chicken shit and hence where should we build biogas plants? And Brazil has got, I think, more chickens than anywhere else in the world. If you give the chickens the vote, you're in a terrible place. But yes, yeah, so, um, so I think Brazil and Latin America and Poland that have got just enormous amounts of chickens uh, will be the future where the biogas plants will be built. And, and I see Brazilian biogas in the next five years as being a very hot market because you've got the feedstock. You've got all those chickens. Thank you very much indeed, Michael. That was a fantastic run around. Uh, one of the great things about Michael uh, is that he calls shit shit, uh, if it's chicken <laughs> shit or anything else. And as we, we have an expression in England, which is where there's muck, there's brass. Uh, where there is uh, shit, there's money. And I think that's uh, something that perhaps is familiar to a lot of people in the sector. Don't invest in football teams. Don't invest in Hollywood movies. Go for something that doesn't have the natural sex appeal, but gives you a good profit. Buy gas. Thank you. Thank you.